Hello everyone, Cindy Zarsky here from the Civic Orchestra of Jacksonville, second violin section in the back and proud of it. Um, we're here with another one of our panel discussions and this is gonna be an interesting potentially series of panel discussions because what we'd like to talk to you about is what it's like as an orchestra to host a soloist and what it's like as a soloist to work with an orchestra. So we have again, our illustrious conductor, Marguerite Richardson, who I know all of you know and love and respect and would go to the ends of the earth for. <laughs> um, and we also have uh, Julie Badger, our, our um, main flute player in the orchestra and Dr. Scott Watkins, uh, uh, professor of keyboards and piano at uh, Jacksonville University. As I've said to you before, since I know nothing about what it's like to be a soloist or host a soloist, I'm really gonna turn this one over to you today. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. Thanks for the wonderful introduction. And thanks to both of our guests who are here to talk about what is it to be a soloist in the orchestra? Um, probably if anyone's been to an orchestra concert, you know that sometimes the first chair violinist, the concert master might play a few bars uh, by him or herself, or maybe Julie will play a flute solo by herself, again, maybe 10, 12, 14, 16 bars, and, you know, different instruments will be featured within the context of the orchestral piece. So that is a very big difference from being asked to learn a piece where you're going to be with your music stand or either that or from memory and standing in front of the orchestra and playing a solo. And in that context, the orchestra, rather than being an equal partner necessarily with you, they're there to play sort of a supporting role, an accompanying role. So that's very different, um, I think, from being in the orchestra. But I think what I'd like to, to talk to both of you about is sort of what that experience has been like for you. Um, Scott, I'll start with you. Um, it's, you also played in your high school band and not as a pianist, um, as a wind player. And then you have also played an orchestra as the, uh, part of the percussion section. So you have been a member of the orchestra and you've also been a soloist and you've actually done both of those roles with the, the civic orchestra. So could you just tell the, um, tell us a little bit about what's it like being in front of the orchestra when you've also been like in the section, in the percussion section? Well, uh, thanks for inviting me. This is a really interesting topic uh, because when you see a soloist with an orchestra, you often don't get to ask that question. What is it like? What's going through your head? Um, I tell my students at Jacksonville University that the hardest stage for me to play on is the one at Jacksonville University because everyone knows who I am. Everyone is familiar with me. Um, and I know that the, at least my, if my students are in the audience, I've taught them to be critical. So I know that they're gonna be listening in very different kind of way. Um, and the same is true when you play a solo with an orchestra. You know, you've practiced and prepared and everything. And you sit down for the first rehearsal. And the first thing that goes through your head is, oh, my God, I'm not just playing for nobody. Now I'm playing for a whole bunch of learned musicians. Um, so it has to be right. And that puts an enormous amount of pressure on the soloist, I think. Um, and sometimes that pressure interferes with the ability to express oneself through all the notes and all the music that you've practiced to prepare. Uh, but it is... You know, if you go tra traveling around, I've had the chance to play with uh, several different orchestras where the um, musicians are not known to me. And, you know, maybe I know the conductor or something, but um, somehow that is a very different feeling than playing, you know, if you're principal flute like Julie is, you stand up and you play Chaminade uh, with the orchestra. Uh, it's like, wow, not only are the people in front of me listening and watching carefully, but the people behind me are also watching and listening carefully. And that puts a lot of pressure on the soloist. So that is that always is an element that creates a little bit of energy and sometimes friction in the, uh, in the performance. 
Interesting. So Julie, how about for you? You are the principal flutist for the Civic Orchestra of Jacksonville, and you've been featured in, in many pieces, but what was it, what was it like to get up there um, and play Chaminade Concertino? Well, I will tell you, there were a lot of firsts involved in that. Uh, first of all, you had not yet begun as our mm -hmm. conductor. So unfortunately for you, you didn't have a say. <laughs> you, it had already been, I had already been asked to do this uh, before you arrived. And I really thought that the plans would have, might have changed when you came and that would have given me more time to practice. But, but no, we, we did that. And so I had kind of a double set of nerves for lack of a better word. I'm, I knew that I had played with you in a smaller setting mm -hmm. when we did not know each other in right. the past, some years prior. And I thought, oh boy, now not only do I have to get up in front and play this mm -hmm. piece that I, number one, had never heard, I'd heard of, but never heard. I heard people speak of the Chaminade, mm -hmm. but in my studies, I never really went into it that far. Um, so when I was approached in midsummer and asked to play, if I would play that on the first concert, and I thought, it, would it be okay if I looked at the music first? And decide? <laughs> but I, I did, I agreed to do it. And I spent the rest of the summer trying to work it out on my own with the assistance of the internet and listening to other people perform it. Uh, and I, that was a big eye opener because it seemed every artist that I listened to played it differently or at different speeds or with different inflections in certain places. And by my playing this for the very first time, I was trying to incorporate some of that and still kind of put my own emotion into it and feeling as to where I felt things should rise and fall or speed up a little bit or slow down or stretch a little bit. Um, so it was quite a project that summer for me to do alone and say, oh my God, I hope I'm doing this okay. <laughs> and I hope that this new conductor who comes in will think that it, and then when I found out it was you, I thought, oh boy, I hope she likes this. <laughs> and as I recall, and you may recall, I was playing like my old early, co early college flute that really needed an overhaul mm -hmm. because my other flute was being overhauled and it was not back yet uh, from when I was told it would be returned to me from Michigan, by the way. So I had to go ahead and play on that. And there were plenty of clunkers and I know it. And you were so patient with me that I really appreciated it. Plus standing in front of the group, many of the people I did not know because we were all starting together for the first time. So uh, I muddled through that and just prayed that, that my flute would get back to me, the one I had been playing for almost 10 years. Um, and by the way, that old flute did get overhauled this summer. So, <laughs> so I have a backup just in case, but um, I felt about the whole thing like my heart was literally just kind of sitting in my throat. Mm. Um, it, it's it's a, something that has happened to me even when I had to play short solos in high school band when I finally became principal flute in high school. Um, and it, it just took me back to all those times and it was a different time then. And I was one of very few people who looked like me. And most of the, the students had had private lessons. Mm -hmm. They had parents who made sure they were tutored and had all these things. And I had zero. I had my band experience uh, from junior high school band, beginning band, whatever. So that all took, that all was part of the nerves mm. of thinking, am I gonna be good enough? Is this going to be acceptable? I don't want to embarrass the group, much less, and, and also myself, by doing this. And this is a, uh, the inaugural concert, mm. you know, for lack of a better word. And it was held on 
what would have been my mother's 90th birthday. Oh my goodness. Mm. Lived. So just, just a lot entered into this that, that people don't know and wouldn't necessarily care to know, but they were all things that were inside of me mm-hmm. and trying to play and do a good job and not fidget. And, you know, I know what st- good stage presence is mm-hmm. and I'm constantly bugging other people about it. Uh, but not when I'm standing in front of a group. So I had to kind of practice what it would be like just standing and especially with the long rests. Okay, what do I do with myself while I'm, you know? And I found when I look back at the recording, I was just slapping myself. So what, leave it alone. You know, I was just, <laughs> I because I kept moving, I kept adjusting the music on the stand and I already had a director size stand to put all the pages out. Uh-huh. But I still had this urge to just want to touch it and slide it, you know, and I caught myself doing that. I, that's a, a tell that I probably, you know, could have kept to myself, but it, it was noticeable to me in the recording. And I thought, oh boy, did you just blow that? But anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I enjoyed doing it. It was a, a great experience, um, something I'd never had the opportunity to do before. I will say I did do a solo once with uh, the wind symphony that I performed with many years before, but I was given like five weeks to learn this piece and it was not an easy one. Uh, So I was very, very nervous about that. But because I had played in that group for some 15, 20 years, Mm -hmm. it was a little bit easier to stand in front of them and play but for this one no it was definitely it was a a very humbling uh experience it was a very terrifying experience (laughs) but i (laughs) but i have to say i can't leave out my faith i have very strong faith Uh, and fortunately we were playing in the cathedral so i felt (laughs) i could feel it you know and i prayed a lot I prayed a lot, practicing it before I did it, while I was resting. Mm-hmm. I was just praying, Lord, please just let me do a good job. Mm. Well, you, you certainly did. And, and I have to just confirm, you did get your main flute back in time, right? That's I did. Yes. It came like the week before the mm. concert. So I was able to at least use it in our dress rehearsal. I just oh. think it's so fun to, to hear you know how musicians are. Oh, I was stressing. I had to pray on the rest and everything. And yeah. then, but I really yeah. enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah, in the I end, did when it was all over. Yeah. In, in the over. end, like, you yeah, know, I, I had a teacher who always said, you know, listen, yeah. don't listen to your performance right afterwards because it gets right. better the longer you wait. If you listen to it the next day, you're like, oh, I missed all yeah. this. And, and you know, I didn't later, listen to it's it. like, well, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And you know, three months down the road, oh, I was a genius. <laughs> Yes, I didn't listen to it for a long time, and I haven't listened to it for a couple of years now. Well, you have to check it, check into I, it. I will go back, go back and check it. But even <laughs> though you and I had met, we hadn't really, we weren't really in conversation. Mm-hmm. So still, to me, you were this. You know, I was, I was honored to be playing in an organization with you, just knowing your background, oh. and I just wanted to do the best I could so that you would feel good about having taken the job. Oh, well, I oh. think you did a beautiful job. Um, so, now, so that was your first experience with an orchestra. Very first. Um, Scott, you um, performed Rhapsody in Blue with the orchestra in May of 19? I think that's right. Yes, May of 19. And um, I'm thinking you have played that piece uh, several times. And okay. you've played with orchestra, you've played it with the, the dance band version, the original version. So I'm just curious, having heard Julie's experience, um, do you remember your first Rhapsody in Blue? And how, how is it to play something like the first time, not knowing necessarily that you're going to be playing it you know, into the future? How are those future... Um, or subsequent experiences? Is it easier? Is it harder? 
is it always about the same? Like what's, what's that experience like? But talk about your first Rhapsody in Blue. Well, uh, let me backtrack and, and talk about my first Tchaikovsky first concerto because uh, that was at Brevard Music Center. That was outdoors. It was the first big concerto I'd ever played. I had once played um, Liszt second and the Cacciatorian in Cincinnati and in Memphis, uh, but I was a college student then and uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really remember a lot about that Cacciatorian performance, except that we couldn't find a person who played the saw in the Memphis Symphony, so they had to use a soprano backstage. That's a discussion for another uh, uh, <laughs> event like this. But my first Tchaikovsky concerto, I made such an e enormous blunder in the first movement or uh, of that piece. In the, uh, I just, I just came in like four bars too early. And every time I have played the Tchaikovsky first concerto, when I get to that spot, I just, a big smile comes on my face because I just remember one time you really screwed this up. <laughs> uh, and now I'm like, okay, well, now I just play the Tchaikovsky concerto. But uh, your answer to your question, the first time I played Rhapsody in Blue, I, it was with the Jacksonville Symphony Orchestra. It was with Michael Butterman conducting and he asked me, hey, do you know the Rhapsody in Blue? We'd like to have you at the JSO. And I said, yeah, sure. I had never learned it before. I totally lied. <laughs> so they asked me to play it because it was it was a great opportunity. And I thought, wow, I've always wanted to learn Rhapsody in Blue. I like it. Um, and I, you know, I know it. I know how it's supposed to go. And so I got the music, learned it, practiced it. And the first performance was great. I mean, I had a really wonderful time. It was like a boyhood dream piece come true you know wow you get to play Rhapsody in Blue the audience screamed to its feet you know my cat Jeebs could play Rhapsody in Blue and the audience would scream to its feet <laughs> it's that kind of a piece so uh, my first time playing Rhapsody in Blue I just it, it was just a really warm positive great experience I didn't I didn't have any anxiety you know there are a couple hard sections in there but I practiced you know I knew how to prepare ahead of time and do it, but uh, I always tell my students, you know, if somebody asks you to play a concerto and you don't know it yet, lie, <laughs> because uh, you might actually get a chance to play it. And so you say, yes, I can play that in six months. And then you go practice your arms to the bone and you have a chance to play a concerto. I mean, how great is that? But when Michael Butterman asked me, hey, do you play Rhapsody Boogie? Yep, sure do. I don't think I would have been that brave <laughs> because it's, I it's, it's Julie it's a piece I've known my entire life I, I know how it's supposed to sound and I know how my fingers work so you know it's you can you can make that happen but um, I just remember lying to him so, yep sure do you can make it happen I've, <laughs> I was make given the booklet I, I still have my booklet of Rhapsody in Blue that uh -huh. my, my piano teacher when I was in high school uh, presented to me who happened to know George Gershwin. Oh my goodness. Yes, and I had to audition for her, by the way. The, the neighborhood lady said, I can't do anything else with her, so you're gonna have to find someone else. Mm. But when I played, when I saw Rhapsody in Blue and I loved it too, and I had listened to it from hearing, listening to my mother listen to that because my whole family just loved that piece. Mm -hmm. And I'd heard it on TV. and. So I knew how it was supposed to go too. And I knew in my mind how it was supposed to go, but actually taking that booklet home and trying to practice it, whew, there's some parts that I probably never did get correctly. I knew how they were supposed to go. Mm -hmm. But now we know through here. Now we know what to do though, Julie. We'll sign you up for our next yeah. Yeah, the yeah, next right. civic orchestra's performance of Rhapsody. <laughs> there you uh, go. I don't think so. Not after Scott. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this guy, it was beautiful, Scott. Oh, oh my thank gosh. You. Thank you. Scott, for your first performance nervous, of it, had you memorized it? Who, me? Yeah, when you first, the, the first time you performed the Rhapsody in Blue, had you mm -hmm. memorized it? Yeah. Yeah. And how sure much did. time did they give you uh, by the time he invited you and you lied to the time you performed? <laughs> gosh, I don't know. Four or five months, maybe, maybe, oh, maybe longer. I think it was, oh, you know, good. Con concerts like that, you know, they get scheduled out almost a whole season in advance so it's it's wow. possible i would have loved to have four months i got four weeks oh 
for the first one I did and it was oh I I didn't give you the title so you can't go look it up on YouTube (laughs) (laughs) wow I I had a great time playing Rhapsody in Blue the Rhapsody in Blue was great I I had a I always have a good time playing it Scott when Julie was talking about her flute it made me think about as a pianist you know, unless you're, you know, Lang Lang or someone, you usually have to play the piano that's there. How do you mm-hmm. find that? You know, I'm, I'm a hack. I'm not a piano player, but I notice when I play different pianos, the touch is so different. And when you're doing those fast runs, how do you accommodate mm-hmm. to that different instrument? Well, uh, it's sort of like getting in a rental car, you know, you know how to drive, you know what the make or the model of the car is, you know how to service it at the at the gasoline station or whatever um it's it's it just feels like that you know it's it doesn't bother me as much anymore unless i get something that's really really awful i've been very lucky uh, to have a relationship with the Kauai piano corporation so they'll if i go somewhere to play a concerto and the piano's not very good i remember doing that several years ago in a small town in texas and uh good orchestra and a great conductor, but uh, they just didn't have the resources to have a good piano. So Kauai sent me a piano up. God, there's my cat, sorry. Sent me up a a piano from Dallas and um, uh, got to play on a nice piano. So that helped a lot. A piano challenge is not as bad as you think it is. I mean, most pianos are pretty well maintained wherever I go and um, I've been pretty lucky. So I'm it doesn't really concern me that much. I mean, if it's a real problem that I get on the phone and call somebody, but I've only ever had to do that one time. Well, I think it's very interesting that we've discovered Julie is also a pianist. Yeah. And Scott has played uh, played flute in high school. Yes. So- it was my first instrument. I'll be darned. And and in in uh, in high school, our high school was I was very fortunate to go to the high school I did in Michigan for performances, which I didn't know. I never knew what this big, uh, I think the wood shop must have made this big box and it had two doors on it with hinges and they kept it padlocked behind our stage. And I never knew what that big box was until I I started playing in jazz band in high school and I played piano and they had pianos in band room in the choir room, but I discovered that on concerts, we got to play on what was inside that box. Mm. And that was a Steinway Grand piano Mm. that they only used for performances like with orchestra or piano solos, or they allowed me to use it for jazz band. And so that was quite an experience to play one of those. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I I will tell you, uh, when I was a high school kid, the flute was my first instrument, but I got to play piano one time. Uh, we were playing a piece that had the the astronomical title of Alpha Centauri. I don't if it was one of these, you know, far out modern kind of band pieces that high mm-hmm. school kids love to play, including me. Uh, but my only experience playing piano in high school was in this piece, and it had one note that the piano had to play. And it was folded arms, crushed down on the keys, black and white keys all at the same time. So I said to my band director, uh, Max Trier, who's still living in Ohio, I said, um, is there there some reason I'm not allowed to play piano the normal way? (laughs) I thought maybe I was being punished. Like I I could only play piano, but boom, that's it. Nothing like this. (laughs) That's funny. That was kind of entertaining. (laughs) So I guess that you had the experience in jazz band, Julie. I mean, and that's pretty exposed. Don't you, do you feel like when you look back at all the, all the opportunities you had before you did the Chaminade with the orchestra, that those all sort of helped give you that confidence so that you did, you feel like you, maybe that um, led you to agree to do that performance, even though it was kind of a shorter timeline, but don't you feel like all those musical experiences uh, affected your decision to say yes, maybe just a little bit? I think it had to a little bit. I, I do. Um, because I had played, I think, once in front of our symphonic band in high school. Mm-hmm. And once I didn't solo in college at all. 
but once um, with the Wind Symphony, I guess I thought, okay, I'll try it. Even though I knew I'd heard a lot about the piece and I went, ooh, it's a standard, but it's, it's very involved standard. Mm -hmm. And because I'd never seen it or tried to play it before, it was more of a challenge for mm -hmm. that reason. But that's, I think that's what I enjoyed most about getting ready to go to college and in my senior year was because everything I did in high school it seemed to all kind of fall in my senior year mm. I we actually did have a string orchestra in my high school mm. and so in my senior year when the the two young ladies who sat ahead of me had gone off to college mm -hmm. <laughs> then you know I was able to play in the orchestra so mm. I I loved my senior schedule because <laughs> I had one English composition class, college prep, and the rest was music all day. And oh, so yeah. that was heaven for me. Um, so I did. I played, you know, in the marching band, the jazz band, the, the orchestra, the symphonic band, and um, <laughs> and I sang in the in the choir, in the chorus. Wow. So my first, in fact, my first overseas trip was the, was due to my chorus teacher. Oh wow. Good. where we were able to go and visit uh, the UK. Mm. Fantastic. Well, those high school teachers and experiences are just so important, aren't they? <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I, I love that lady to this day. I'm sure she's passed by now, but because I had moved away um, so young, in, mm -hmm. midway through college, um, moved out of state. So I guess... Uh, to sort of, in, in a sense, kind of uh, wrap up in our thinking, do either of you, uh, would either of you consider playing a solo with the orchestra again? Julie, we get to start with you. <laughs> sure, I'd like to know, you know, what the, the piece would be, of course. Uh -huh. I would love to have more than four weeks to, <laughs> to learn. Uh -huh. or, yeah, so or, would I. <laughs> or to, uh, to try to wing it by listening to YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but sure, I, I consider it again because I think now that I got that, the first year jitters under my belt with the new conductor and the new group that I'm playing with and, and all of it, uh, I won't have that part to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I think that would make it a little bit, a little bit easier. Uh -huh. for me to do and can I please mention too and I just talked about this beloved band director of mine who just passed away he took me aside and worked with me because he knew I had never had a private lesson in my life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had had a few piano I'd had piano lessons mm -hmm. with the, the late the lady in the neighborhood who gave piano lessons for an hour for two dollars mm -hmm. and he would take me aside sometimes like on um, if I had study hall and I would come down and we'd sit in the practice room and he would go over things with me because he also could play flute. He was a very good clarinetist, mm. but he could also play flute. Mm. And I, I just have adored him and admired him to this day because he took the time with me knowing that I had no private instruction or background I only knew what I had learned in beginning band in junior and seventh grade. My goodness. Uh, so he would take me aside, have me read certain parts and play. And it has stuck with me all these 40 some 50 years that he said, the most important thing is to just think pretty. <laughs> think to make it sound pretty. And that will help with your tone. Uh -huh. If you just think of it being a pretty sound. You'll start to tune in and hear the different things that are happening with your flute. And I, you know, I was probably playing on a hundred and fifty dollar Artly then, <laughs> uh, so that my parents worked very hard to get for me uh, when they saw that I was interested in getting into band. Mm -hmm. So um, he was just very special to me for that reason. The teachers never. Sometimes you never know if that one thing you say to somebody is going to make that kind of an impact. But mm -hmm. I think probably all of us, everyone here has something that they've heard or something that was said to them that mm -hmm. impacts them and, and, you know, does shape things for them musically. And mm -hmm. yeah. with you forever. 
Yeah, uh, no question. Scott, do you think you would play again with Civic Orchestra? Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. What do you have in mind? Oh, <laughs> I see. There's, Let's go. There's the businessman. You're really yes, yes, yes. Putting, it, put it, uh, put in an order. Um, Start I negotiating see. now. Yeah. Is there anything for it. like two people playing flute who then changed to two people playing piano in the middle of it? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I can't think off the top of my head. No, 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 no. no. Cindy, we're not switching. No. <laughs> Hand him your flute and gust it at the piano. No. Yeah. Versatility. I know. Well, I ask the question in a different way, though, Julie and Scott. If you could pick what you'd like to oh. end up in solo, what would you pick? Oh, my goodness. See, I can't rattle off the pieces like you who have been in orchestras can. Um, Programming is such a such a personal, intricate, difficult kind of thing. You know, you don't want to suggest too many things. I'm just trying to think of some things that would not require hours and hours of rehearsal or practice time on the part of the orchestra and something that mm -hmm. I know and feel comfortable with. Like we could do Greek or we could do Rachmaninoff two. We could do um, uh, one of the Beethovens, maybe three, four, or five. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what else is out there. Oh, uh, Mozart, Mozart concertos. I love playing them because they're just they're like opera, mm -hmm. and they're so charming and they can be very dramatic and everything. But um, it doesn't involve that many musicians in the orchestra. One of my most favorite pieces is the concerto for harp and flute by Mozart. Oh well, yeah, I'd have to hear it to be honest with you to know if I've heard it before. If you've ever heard, if you've ever seen Amadeus, there's a little snippet in there. Okay. But it's that one, if you haven't heard it, I would definitely listen to that. Harp okay. and flute. Well, you think about it. Uh, I we'll have to I'm going to look that up. I don't want to be blind. Find. Uh, but no, I do think it's really important. There was one year in Jacksonville Symphony that um, our conductor decided that everyone in the string section would play solo. Every mm -hmm. single player. And sometimes it was a piece for two players at once or three or even four um, it, in various, you know, various combinations. Uh, but they found, the orchestra found a piece for every string player. And I have to say it was, it was a really good um, feeling for the, like the esprit de corps because it's one of those things that then you all have that common experience. I think, you know, you were talking about it's so hard to stand in front of people and know that, you know, there are people that you normally sit in the row, you know, you sit in the section mm -hmm. and then to be like, you know, singled out to get to, to stand in front. Um, I think it's good for everyone to have that experience or at least, you know, it, it, I mean, some people just like, you know, really, really don't want to go there. And, and I get that. But but it is it is a special experience and it's that's why I laughed when you were saying you know oh I was nervous and all this but I really enjoyed it and I think it's hard so for, I think it's hard for non-musicians to like you know what you described almost sounded like torture but then you really enjoyed it I um I think it as you know someone who's played violin for many years um and and have had a few opportunities to to play in front of the orchestra I think you you sum it up beautifully the first, you know, at some point you're like, why did I agree to this? But then you kind of get to a, you know, a point that mm -hmm. it sort of starts to roll and then you get with the rehearsals. And, and then the next thing, you know, even though you're nervous and everything, and you're kind of glad the moment it's over, you're also a little sad. Like this has been my focal it's point. Done. Yes. It's mm -hmm. such a long time, and it's almost like grief. I mean, you miss it. Mm -hmm. I agree. And the, the moment of doing it is, is very, very special. I, I got to play the Barber Violin Concerto in um, St. Paul by the Sea some years ago. And um, yeah. every time the Civic Orchestra plays there, I, I remember, Go you know, the nerves being, being down below the church, sort of in their basement level, like getting my gown on to go up and play the solo. And, you know, but every time the, that we're there, it, it brings back those memories of playing in that, playing in that you know, beautiful location. And um, uh, yes, the terror 
but also the feeling of accomplishment and the the you really you know learn to love that piece and and whatever yes. you're playing and and sort of internalize it so yes. i'm hoping that um from this series of discussions maybe more more of our musicians in the orchestra will get the bug and um who knows have a concerto um like round table or competition even or, or something along those lines for people who really want to take it to that next experience. So you never know where these things are gonna lead. You know, the uh, Mozart has that um, Symphonia Concertant for uh, violin and viola. He also has the uh, Woodwind Quartet Concerto mm -hmm. for flute, clarinet, bassoon, and horn. Wow, well, you, both of you have had some really wonderful insights into playing in front of the orchestra, coming from within an orchestra and then playing in front of the orchestra. Um, we know obviously that you're, you know, it wasn't such a horrible experience, you wouldn't do it again. So that's a really great thing. So um, hopefully we are gonna be looking forward to our 21-22 season and looking at some programming for that very soon. Um, I think some ideas are already in the works and um, I know everyone who, plays in the orchestra is ready to get back. I know everybody's ready to start talking about music mm -hmm. and programming. Mm -hmm. And hopefully um, we'll have some more musicians from the orchestra that are, are willing to get in front and share their talents and their, their dream pieces um, you know, with, with our wonderful audience. Um, and I thank both of you for, for coming here and, and talking about your experience playing in front of the Civic Orchestra of Jacksonville. And Cindy right. for, for um, helping to facilitate this wonderful chat today. And I'd like to thank you, Marguerite, for always taking the lead so eloquently. Julie, Scott, uh, your performances and your conversation have just been utterly delightful. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, engage a few more of the soloists we've had over the years to have more conversations like this, because I, I thought this was really, really very enjoyable and edifying. So thank you all and good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>